If you are an E4, E5 player, you have no option but to watch this video up to the end. I mean, after E4, then you go pawn to E5. It's not every time you are going to see your opponents playing knight to F3 or knight C3 on the second move or probably bishop C4 which is the bishop's opening. You should also be ready to face the move pawn to F4 which is the king's gambit. So after pawn to F4, what are you supposed to do? A few months ago, I recommended the move pawn to D6 followed by knight bd7 kind of the rat defense which also works well for example after d6 if white foolishly takes the pawn on e5 we looked at this deadly move queen h4 check which aims at winning the e4 pawn worse off if white blocks with the g pawn the top played move this is where you can go queen takes e4 and on the next move you are going to win a free rook on h1 this is also cool it's a decent way of playing against the king's gambit and in one of my live streams i also covered the move pawn to d5 if i can remember very well so this is called the folk beer counter gambit simply the king's gambit declined and the idea is that after e takes d5 the top played move you advance your e pawn stopping knight to f3 and if pawn to d3 for example you simply go knight to f6 if d takes e4 you take back with your king's knight and after knight to f3 you go bishop c5 with an intention of giving white a check on f2 and literally there's nothing that white can do in this position there's nothing much maybe queen e2 but after this you can just take advantage of this pin as well and defend your knight this way i mean there's no pawn to pin our knight right and if something like knight c3 putting more pressure on the knight well you can just go queen e7 i mean double defending your knight so white can't take because you have two defenders if bishop e3 you simply take this can be a normal game at the end of the day queen takes e3 then you mess up white spawn structure like this so that if queen takes e7 you take back with your king and after this you then get back your pawn why do i like this because it's just easy to play and you just avoided a lot of traps that can happen in the king's gambit your pawns are well fixed and well connected you're one move away from developing your knight and connect your rooks now recently i came across one of daniel's youtube videos or rather a live stream where he was crushing his opponent with a move pawn to c6 at first i didn't fully understand the logic behind this move but later on i came to realize it's a similar strategy with my d6 recommendation just to show you for example if white foolishly takes the e5 pawn we can simply go queen h4 check again if pawn to g3 there comes queen takes e4 check and on the next move white will surely lose a free rook on h1 if queen e2 for example i can just take the rook after knight to f3 first of all our queen is not going to be trapped in other words black is completely winning but it can be tricky to save the queen from h1 that's why you need to watch this video up to the end so that you know how to save this queen we can see that our queen is almost trapped it can't move it can't escape from sobibo and if white can find a way of unpinning his light squad bishop maybe by putting the king on d2 after moving the d pawn our queen can easily be trapped with a move bishop g2 so in this case the best continuation is pawn to d5 here you're just trying to pave way for your light squared bishop if something like pawn to d4 with the idea of putting the king on d2 and playing bishop g2 here you can just go bishop g4 and pin that knight first of all the light squared bishop is still pinned to the king if something like knight bd2 well, we'll just continue pushing the pawns i mean the bishop is still pinned let's say king f2 you know trying to do this you know what this would be a sheer waste of time because of knight d takes f3 so the way you save your queen is by going pawn to h4 if bishop g2 comes there you go h takes g3 with check and if hg happens now you can safely rescue your queen to h7 or let's say if white plays king takes g3 well thanks to this pin because now queen takes h2 is possible supported by your h rook if knight takes h2 nice because you're gonna take back your queen with a better pawn structure and a passed pawn so that's one of the many ways in which you can rescue your queen after capturing a free rook on h1 somewhere here anyway after c6 and f takes e5 again you just remember to go queen h4 check and we saw what happened if white plays pawn to g3 you go queen takes 
e4 check. If king e2, nice, you just made white lose his right to castle. And again, you can simply go queen takes e4 check. The king has to go to f2 only move. And now you go bishop c5 check. Again, if d4, you have bishop takes d4 check. If king g3, only sensible move once again. It's now up to you to think of a better winning strategy. Bishop takes e5 check is okay, but speaking of strategy, you want to send more troops to your enemy's territory. Knight e7 with an intention of going knight f5 check next and maybe mate white like this. So there are many ways to kill a rat, you guys. And this was all in the f takes e5 after pawn to c6 on move number two. So this is just the same idea with my d6 recommendation. But I think I love Daniel's recommendation pawn to c6 even more because it just looks more matured and more aggressive. So we saw how bad f takes e5 is. What if white plays the top played move knight to f3? Well, after this, you are at liberty to come up with any strategy that works for you. What I don't like is teaching my students to memorize moves because chess is 99% tactics. It's all about the tactics that you come up with your own strategies. So if you want, you can take on a4, that's okay, but that will lead to an equal position. And if something like pawn to d4, also paving way for their dark squared bishop, you can just go knight to f6 as if nothing happened, attacking this pawn. If pawn to e5, for example, you can go knight d5 in this position. If pawn to c4, attacking your knight once again. First of all, this is an overextension. You can go knight b6, but bishop b4 is even more dangerous. Because if knight c3 you are going to take and on the next move win the rook on a1. Or if white doesn't do this, let's say they go knight b d2 or bishop d2. You can simply go knight e3. These are all tactics that anyone can see. Very easy to spot. Don't even argue with me as I know what I'm talking about. This bishop can't take the knight because it is pinned by our dark squad bishop. So if something like queen a4, there is no check here. We can just take the bishop on d2 with check and after knight b takes d2. This is when we can go pawn to d6 trying to open up some more lines and also paving way for our light squad bishop. This is okay. So this is what I meant by avoiding to memorize moves. You can play anything that makes sense. Learn to come up with your own strategies rather than following everything that the author of that book taught you. Anyway, but speaking of Daniel's repertoire, I saw him playing this way after knight to f3 on move number three. Instead of taking, he was playing pawn to d5, which is more aggressive and tricky, by the way. The idea is that if e takes d5, because that's what people do whenever they see d5. You simply go pawn to e4 first, attacking this knight, and if queen e2 pinning that pawn to the king, you go c takes d5, you fix your pawns, and after pawn to d3, I love pawn to f4 for some reason, then followed by knight to f6, but knight f6 here is the typical response to d3. And it's fine since white doesn't even have bishop g5. So knight f6 makes a lot of sense. After de, you just take back with your pawn. And in this position, you are not bad. You are good. You can play bishop e7 and castle short. Next, develop your knight. I don't even know what you can do here. But after pawn to d5, let's say f takes e5. Once again, you can just go de attacking the knight like for real there is no queen e2 because we are attacking the knight so the knight better goes back and now you are in total control you can go knight d7 if you want to start with just attacking this pawn if something like queen e2 you can just take the e5 pawn if you want or just go queen h4 first if pawn to g3 this is when you go queen e7 and after something like queen takes you also take the e5 pawn with your knight because you want to do a little discovery after something like knight to f6. And it's even difficult for white to move his queen from this square. Okay, let's just say bishop e2. Well, you can simply go knight to f6. And if queen g2, just as an example, here comes bishop f5, now attacking this pawn. If pawn to d3, I mean, I can even castle long if I want because I'm just ahead in development and continue playing normal chess from here. So once again, back to our initial position. After white plays the top played move, knight to f3, it's up to you to take the a4 pawn, but I highly recommend that you follow what Dania recommended pawn to d5 because this is more aggressive. And instead of e takes d5 or f takes e5, if this time white plays knight takes e5, you can just take the e4 pawn. I mean, what else can you do? 
after bishop c4 double attacking your f7 pawn you always have knight h6 see that white doesn't have bishop takes h6 so you're good to go and if knight c3 you simply go pawn to f6 white pawn to f6 you don't want to entertain your enemies pieces in your territory this is your territory right here so that knight better goes back by the way it looks like this knight is almost trapped and why should be very careful because if something like queen h5 check you can simply go pawn to g6 and there's no way out for this knight if this happens i mean you can just take back and after queen takes g6 check you have king e7 and maybe after knight takes e4 preparing for queen takes f6 check you have queen d4 you know protecting your f6 pawn if pawn to c3 you simply go queen takes c4 it looks like white can mate you but in all variations this is just a dream in fact there are no more checks at this point if pawn to d3 you can just go queen takes d3 there's absolutely nothing and if you are looking at queen takes h8 this is nothing because we can just grab that free knight as well pushing the king to f1 then we play king e8 game over this in an effort to pin our queen doesn't work due to queen d3 check first i mean there are so many things that you can do if king e1 or king g1 it doesn't matter you simply go bishop g4 this is coming this is coming there is no checkmate for white or whatsoever but let's say white plays knight c3 in this position attacking your e4 pawn well in this position you still don't want this right you don't want to entertain your enemy's pieces in your territory you can just go knight bd7 so that if this happens you just get rid of white's knight and you simply go queen d4 remember what you're doing in the ruler pairs simply attacking the knight and the pawn on e5 but this time white may play queen e2 defending the knight and you can take the e5 pawn if you want white won't be able to win your free queen i mean you just take back and if this you don't take back with your knight because they are going to take your free queen so you take with your g pawn like this so this is okay but i'm sure it's not going to happen you're not going to see this happening in your games anyways now what if white tries to play solidly after knight f3 and pawn to d5 then next knight to c3 well the rule of thumb in these kinds of positions or to be specific in the folk b counter gambit is that you are supposed to take the f4 pawn to simplify the game you better take the f4 pawn like this and after e takes d5 you simply take back with your c pawn if bishop b5 check you go knight c6 i mean most of these stuff are self-explanatory rookie one check can be made with bishop e6 if you want or bishop e7 followed by castle short if pawn to d4 you can go bishop e7 if you want or bishop d6 holding on to your pawn if rook e1 you have bishop e6 or even king f8 instead of bishop e6 anything is playable here anyways so for you to play this line successfully you need to be more aggressive because the king's gambit in its nature is an aggressive gambit pawn to c6 just prepares for pawn to d5 of course there are a lot of things a lot of sidelines that i haven't covered such as pawn to d3 but after this remember the rule of thumb is just to take the f4 pawn after bishop takes this is when you go pawn to d5 so pawn to d5 is the key move in both the folk beer counter gambit and daniel's c6 defense against the king's gambit right let me know what you think about this let me know which version you like so much against the king's gambit is it the d6 line or is it the actual folk beer counter gambit or simply daniel's c6 defense let me know what you think otherwise i think all these sideline responses look similar to me they have similar ideas what you just don't want to do is to take the f4 pawn immediately in the king's gambit you don't want to accept the king's gambit because you're giving white more initiative they know what they do after this so this is it thank you for watching this video until next time bye bye